Greetings, I'm the dentist. In our dent agenda, we will be continuing the second chapter, Preventive and Community Dentistry. These are the points included in this chapter video series, and in this tutorial, we will handle the last point, Dentistry for People with Disabilities. A disabled person is someone with a physical or mental impairment, which has a substantial and long-term adverse effect on their ability to carry out normal day-to-day -day activities. Starting with intellectual impairment, it includes mental disability and learning difficulty, in which the affected person may fall into one of these IQ levels. Many cases lack a well-defined etiology, but there are some subgroups where the cause or diagnosis is known, some of which would be Down syndrome or Fragile X syndrome caused by trisomy of chromosome 21, cerebral palsy, birth anoxia, meningitis, rubella, autism, and microcephaly. It has a prevalence of 3%. Physical impairment. Most common is cerebral palsy, which is the motor manifestation of cerebral damage. Many patients with cerebral palsy have normal IQs, but increased muscle tone and hyperactive reflexes can make the treatment difficult. Many can be treated in general dental practice provided they're in wheelchair access. Medical impairment. 1% of children have heart disease, bleeding disorders, diabetes or kidney disease. Sensory impairment. That is blindness, mute or deafness. Many have more than one type of impairment. These groups have general disabilities. We also need to consider those who are orally disabled, like those who have a gross oral problem or defect which necessitates special dental treatment, like cleft lip or palate. Problems dentists may face. It is difficult to generalize, but usually mental disability provides the biggest challenge. Difficulties increased in patients with more than one impairment. During the delivery of care, you may face practical difficulties in carrying out dental work. In general, disabled patients have decreased black control and increased periodontal problems, although caries incidence is not significantly increased compared to the normal population, but the amount of untreated caries often is. Dentures may not be practical, and extractions are not a realistic solution to the problem. To provide a dental care. Here are the standard manual alphabet signs that may help you communicate with a deaf or mute patient. And here are the dental signs that may help the deaf or mute patient to express how they feel to their dentist during that dental procedure. Management of dental patients with disabilities. The management of patients with disabilities can be difficult to generalize, but patients with less severe disabilities can be treated in dental practice. Those with severe medical or mental impairments are probably best managed by a specialist who will have increased access to specialist facilities. Treatment planning and initial plan should be formulated ignoring the disability itself. This can then be discussed with the patient, parent or carer and modified for the individual. Where treatment needs are not urgent, it's advisable to start with oral hygiene and instructions and prevention, then reassess the treatment requirements in the light of the response. The use of an electric toothbrush and chemical cleaning measures like chlorhexidine might be helpful. For those patients 
for whom a satisfactory standard of oral hygiene is not possible, restorative treatment should aim to decrease plaque accumulation. Kind but firm restraint might be necessary. Ideally, get the patient carer to help. For example, a Mackison rubber or bite block may be needed. It is often easier to use an intraligamentary local anesthesia technique rather than nerve block. Sedation may help reduce the spontaneous movements in case of cerebral palsy. In some cases, there is no alternative but to carry out examination and treatment under general anesthesia. However, this approach requires special facilities and no medical contraindications. Before we end this video series, let's have a look on some information that some consider them lies and others consider them statistics. Sugar consumption. In some societies, the consumption of sugar is more than half a kilogram per week. Children receive about one-fifth to one-quarter of their energy intake from sugars. Most of these are added sugars, more than two-thirds of which come from sweets, table sugar and soft drinks. 65% of all soft drink sales are directed to younger than 15-year-old children. Low-income families consume more sugar per person and per day than higher-income families. Fluoride effect. Water fluoridation decreased caries experience and increased the proportion of children free of caries by 5 to 64 percent. A cup of tea may contain up to six parts per million of fluoride which is at an equivalent concentration of sodium fluoride or sodium monofluorophosphate containing toothpastes. Caris A reduction of 10-60% to 60 in caris experience of developed countries has been widely reported. This is thought to be due to a variety of factors, including fluoride toothpaste, increased public awareness, changes in infant feeding practices, decreased sugar consumption, and antibiotics in food chains. In addition, there has been a change in the pattern of caries attack, with a greater decrease in smooth surface than fissure caries, perhaps reflecting the influence of fluoride. Small occlusal lesions appear to be becoming the more prominent type of lesions. This table illustrates how the general oral health of populations has improved over three decades. And there you have it about how to deal with patients with different health disabilities. And with this, we conclude this video series. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to have you here for more videos. And follow us on Instagram at Dented Gender for extra tips and tricks.